Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the great pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast, that's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. I have been eagerly awaiting the chance to do our second half of the early contenders. Yeah, the top contenders. Uh, pre-entries are due out one week from today, Matt Shipman. That's next Wednesday. Uh, so we are looking at the top contenders as we see them going through last week. If you missed the show, I don't know why you missed the show, but if you missed the show, we did all seven main track races, all seven dirt races at Del Mar. Now we're doing all seven turf races. We're going to get a little more international, although when we talked about some international uh, horses last week. Matt, let's start with the biggest, the richest. We're going to talk about the turf first. And, uh, of course, this is a $5 million race now, a mile and a half on the grass. And lo and behold, we agree on the number one top contender, Matt. Why don't you tell me a little bit about him? Well, Brian, it's Rebels Romance we're talking about here. Uh, and, and he has been uh, good for a long time. And when he's good, he's really good. And, and uh, uh, he's back to his... Uh, Group one winning ways once again, winning one uh, in Germany in his last start and finishing third in another at Ascot and winning the, winning a big one at Chatin in Hong Kong and in Maidan all over the world, Brian. Rebels romance uh, and his $9 million of earnings, his 14 career wins. I guess that's why we got him on top. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, last year, he, this six-year-old gelded son of Dubawi has been a star all over the world, as you alluded to there. I mean, even on dirt back in the day, he was a uh, UAE Derby winner uh, before he found his real home going long on the grass. And uh, wow, has he been good. Last year, wasn't completely healthy, didn't run much, things didn't go his way, but he's back in full force, as you say. Four or five this year, he ran third to two of the best grass horses in the world at Ascot for his only loss of the year, coming off a nice win. Most importantly, he's already come to America several times, and of course he won the Breeders' Cup turf two years ago. He's the horse to beat for both Matt and I. Who do you have at number two, sir? I've got an American horse, Brian. I feel like uh, uh, we've got to put include, at least on my list, what what appears to be the best American distance turf horse right now. That's Far Bridge for Christophe Clement, the winner of two big uh, uh, turf races uh, recently, the Turf Classic at Aqueduct and the Sword Dancer at Saratoga, did it two different kinds of ways, did one on the lead and, and then another one from more of a stalking position. So I, I, I like his uh, uh, tractability. Yeah, Far Bridge is a four-year-old that's getting better, and it looks like he likes 12 furlongs, those two grade ones wins in New York. Now, but, but I hope people are thinking like you do because I have a different uh, horse that I think is the best American chance to win this race and his name. And you'll see him down on number three. He'll be a little bit more of a long shot than far bridge. His name is truly quality. I've talked about truly quality before in the show. In fact, I wanted to bet him in that turf classic, but they decided to go to Canada instead. Matt, he is a four year old just like far bridge and he is getting better and better by the start. Just barely missed uh, from being undefeated this year. His last two wins colonial, uh, in, in favor of the Turf Classic, they went to the Singspiel up in Canada, and uh, despite a slow pace, he came from way back and just roared by the field down the stretch. I like Truly Quality, one of my better long shots of the whole Breeders' Cup. He's my number three, but at two, uh, I have a, another European uh, on this list, and it's a horse that we both have, Jerebi, Jerebi. Matt is a French three-year-old, and we've seen French three-year-olds do well over here before. Uh, son of Zafany, 
Now, Brian Meehan has won this race twice before. Uh, maybe not the biggest European name as far as trainers coming over, but he's won the Breeders' Cup twice before. And this three-year-old is uh, very good. Uh, three wins, one second, kind of like truly quality. But he's been doing it in top class. The only horse to beat him recently is uh, economics. And, of course, he's one of the best turf horses in the world as well. He has a nice win in France last time, Matt. And I see him. You have him pretty high on your list as well. Yeah, absolutely, Brian. Uh, uh, winning big races. And I know, you know, they're, uh, they're group twos. He's got a group one win in the Irish Derby in there also. But, you know, when you're running in this kind of company that he has been at the best track, at Longchamp, at Dovey, uh, 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 you know, he, you know that he's running against the, the best kind of competition. Uh, eight starts in his career, five wins, two-thirds, uh, uh, runs well every time. Yeah, he runs well every time, and he's better at three, and he's it looks better at a distance. Big threat in the Breeders' Cup turf. We both have him pretty high. You have Los Angeles number three, Matt. I, I don't think Aiden O'Brien is going to bring him uh, after all. It looks like they're going to be running – after running a good third in the arc just a couple of weeks ago, they're going to be running right back in the champion stakes at Ascot this weekend. So it looks like Los Angeles won't come. Um, I have number four on my list, uh, a Japanese horse, uh, Shah Rihar, who ran a good race. I love how I butcher these, uh, these pronunciations. A Japanese horse who ran a good race last year in the Breeders' Cup uh, turf, uh, third last year beaten about a length and a half matt and i think he's coming in with better form than he did last year he was second to rebels romance in dubai um i expect another big effort coming over to california again from him who do you have as your last horse on your list uh brian i've got to include uh i've got to include next on my list uh, uh if we see next in the breeders cup i i think we're gonna see next in this race because it is the longer distance, because it is the mile and a half. That's what uh, uh, trainer Doug uh, Cowan said to me after uh, after he ran at Parks on Pennsylvania Derby Day, that they wanted to get that long distance, and he has run well at uh, 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 on the grass back a number of times, but he did run well on the grass. I don't know. I don't know, Brian, how he stacks how he stacks up against these kind of horses, but um, I'm a big fan of next. Yeah, no, I'm a big fan of next too. And I think he's better than a lot of people think. I, I don't know that this is the right spot. I don't know that the British cup classic necessarily is the right spot. They're, they're going to make their decision. Apparently uh, the accounts is going to make his decision within the next week or so. Uh, so we'll be looking forward to see where next runs. It could be the British cup classic could be the British cup turf. You got turf, you got a mile and a half. You got dirt, which he's been running on since he's gotten good on a mile and a quarter. So tough decision for next, but interesting. Include on your list. Let's go to the mile next, Matt. Mile's always a good race, and, and I think this is uh, no exception. It looks like we're pretty different on our lists. Uh, I have a European three-year-old filly. In fact, I have two European three-year-old fillies at one, two. You have an American as your number one. I do. I've got Carl Spackler on top uh for chad brown for e5 racing e5 racing you know who kind of has uh taken racing by storm hasn't been in the game that long but uh won a lot of big races won breeders cup races etc carl spackler uh, uh has won three races in a row um he is a legitimate miler he's won the turf mile most recently at Keeneland. He won the four-star Dave at Saratoga and a grade three warming up uh, into this season also uh, in the Kelso. Uh, he's good right now. Again, is he good enough to uh, 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 handle the best, some of the best of Europe? We shall see, but I've got him on top. You got him on top and I, and he he's not to be found on my list. Listen, there's a lot of good horses uh, pointing for the Breeders' Cup mile right now. And and certainly I recognize Carl Spackler is a very good horse. I, deep down, though, I feel like he's a little bit better when there's more give 
in the turf course than he's likely to get out in California. And I'm just not thinking that the horses he's beating on the eastern half of the country are going to stack up against the Euros. Uh, Porta Fortuna is my number one. And uh, of course, the daughter of Caravaggio uh, is well known. She almost won the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies turf last year. Uh, so she's come over to California, run well, and she's taken it up to a new level out a mile over in Europe. Really impressive record. She fires every time, which I think is a key, why she's my number one. And the horse that she's beaten a couple times, Ramatui, uh, came back and won a big uh, seven furlong great uh, group one race uh, in France on Arc Weekend. And I, I think she is also really good, trained by Christoph, Christopher head so uh we we've seen the heads do well in this uh breeders cup mile and and i like the phillies i'm all about the phillies in the breeders cup mile number two on your list matt i don't know we're going to see him i would like sharing quite a bit in, in this spot but he's another one of those horses that's going to run uh saturday at ascot he's in the qe2 so uh, i haven't heard anything for sure about the breeders cup mile but i have a feeling if he runs at Ascot as planned on Saturday, he might not be there, but definitely a big threat. Who's your number three? Um, my number three is uh, Johannes for a uh, California horse uh, for uh, trained by Tim Yachtin. Won four races in a row. Uh, won the uh, grade one Shoemaker Mile. Just a little bit of home cooking for yeah. that pick. Yeah, yeah. Well, we, if Sharon it, that doesn't come over, like uh, I'm thinking he won't, you have, you're going to end up with Americans one, two. Johannes, I, I actually like Johannes uh, best of the American males. Um, uh, seven out of eight on turf. And, and, you know, he had an excuse his only loss. He's, he's a dominant miler out in California. And I think he should be respected. I have him down at number five. I think the, the, the favorite of this whole race will end up being over Carl Spackler will be the, my third horse, your fifth horse, his name is Notable Speech, Matt. And Notable Speech, of course, go Dolphin, Appleby. Uh, a deserving favorite because he's run some big Group 1 wins over in Europe. But not quite as consistent as Porta Fortuna, for example. And uh, it, it seems like this horse wants a firmer turf, which would be a good thing for the Breeders' Cup mile. But uh, I, I'm not loving the fact that he doesn't always fire. Yeah, well, you know, and that's only been a couple times, Brian, because he's got five wins from seven career starts. So, yeah, it's happened a couple of times for sure. Uh, one of them in his most recent start when he finished fifth uh, in a group one race at Longchamp. Yeah, and, and that was a turf course, again, that will be different than Del Mar. So, uh, you know, anybody who likes notable speech, I'm certainly not trying to talk you off him, and I have him pretty high on my list. Uh, I see you have Porta Fortuna on your list as well. So the only other horse we haven't mentioned yet, Matt, is another uh, female. Can't say Philly. Gina Romant Romantica has been around for a while. This is a Chad Brown trained uh, veteran who's won grade ones the last three seasons at Keeneland. She loves Keeneland. But I think it's more than that. I think she really wants a firm, firm turf. If, if the turf is not real firm, she's not quite as good. She's still good. But on a firm turf, she runs her best. Last year, Matt, in the Breeders' Cup mile, she was beaten a length after winning at Keeneland. I was more impressed with her this year. In fact, I was more impressed with her the same afternoon at Keeneland than I was with Carl Spackler uh, when she won the first lady. I think Gina Romantique... Uh, will get the firm turf in the Breeders' Cup, and I think she is a dangerous horse in here. Yeah, I think so also. you, know, you got a few fillies in there, and we know there's a history of fillies, mares, doing very well uh, in the mile. Goldakova comes to mind. Miesk comes to mind as well. Hey, three of my top four are, are females, so uh, I, I, you know, I'm all about the, uh, the females in the Breeders' Cup mile. Speaking of females on the turf at Del Mar, let's go to the Philly and Mare turf, Matt, and always a fun race. Unfortunately, I now think when this list was made, I, I really liked a lot about content, including the fact that I didn't think she was going to be one of the most preferred of the Euros, but it looks like she's going to run as well 
at Ascot on Saturday, and she's going to try the males in the in the uh, in the big one over there. So content probably will not be there. Who is your number one? My number one is uh, Friendly Soul from the barn of the uh, Gosdens, Brian. Six career starts, five wins, most recently uh, a group one at Longchamp. Yeah, she's she's very consistent. She's a daughter of Kingman, a three-year-old daughter of Kingman. There's a couple things that give me a little pause, especially if she's the favorite. She's never been farther than 10 furlongs, and I think she probably likes softer turf. Having said that, five for six, all the class, all the form, it's hard to completely throw her off, off the list, and uh, I, I have her pretty prominent there, as you can see. There's another Gosden one that might run, although she's also talked about for the uh, Breeders' Cup turf. That's Emily Upjohn. She is 0 for 6 this year, but she is running well, and she looks to like 11 furlongs or, or longer, a classy mare to watch out for. It'll be interesting to see if Gosden runs them both in this race or separates them. we got to get back to our number twos, because we have the same number two, and she's an American. Yep, tons of respect for Warlike Goddess. She's seven years old now. Uh, last year, we remember she ran against the boys. She ran against the boys uh, in the my at the mile and a half uh, uh, distance, which uh, was a preferred distance for trainer Bill Mott for Warlike Goddess. She ran against the boys last time uh, in the Turf Classic and now goes back to face uh, uh, to face the girls in here. So uh, uh, change of tactics a little bit this year for uh, Bill Mott, but tons and tons of respect for Warlike Goddess. Yeah, and the Philly Mare Turf is always changing distances. And at Del Mar, it's 11 furlongs. So I think that's a big part of the story. And I think that's a big edge for her now as she comes back against females because she wants really 11 furlongs or longer. She gets 11 furlongs in this race. She'll also get a good pace, which she doesn't often see in those long races in New York. So I think Warlike Goddess has a big shot here. And with content likely out, she's probably my top pick now. Matt, you have some other North Americans uh, pretty prominent on your list there. Uh, yes, uh, indeed, Brian. Um, I've got uh, I've got full count Felicia for uh, Kevin Attard and uh, the Gold Square stable of Al Gold. This is a five year old that uh, has done some pretty good running out front and 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 is going to provide some of that speed that you were mentioning last time was a winner of the EP Taylor a group a grade one in Canada and also won the Canadian grade two at Woodbine. Yeah, she's better than ever and she is pure speed. So uh, an interesting uh, uh, content to the mix here is full count Felicia on the front in the Philly Mare Turf. Uh, one horse we both have on our list is Opera Singer, and there's a lot to like about Opera Singer. She is a Justify, a three-year-old filly by Justify out of a, uh, a Sadler's Wells mare. So I think she's going to like the distance. She's only been more than 10 furlongs once. She was beaten in the Vermeil. That was by Blue Stocking by four and a half lengths on a softer turf course. Uh, before that, she won the 10 furlong Nassau of her very good fillies. Uh, I think this one has a, a pretty big uh, shot, uh, a lot of class for this three-year-old daughter of Justify coming over. Yeah, I agree. A lot of class running against top, top competition over in Europe. And finally, I see you have Anisette, uh, the Californian, uh, of California import uh, at number five. Yep, another one of those uh, 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 home home court uh, turf courses, a winner of the grade one yellow ribbon, which is run at uh, Del Mar and a couple of other grade ones at Santa Anita. Yeah, yeah Anisette definitely is uh, very good at Del Mar. I, 11 furlongs would be my question with her, but uh, she likes Del Mar. We'll switch from 11 furlongs all the way down to five furlongs, Matt. We're going to go to the turf sprint next. And in the turf sprint, we have some similarities, including the number one. And uh, there was no question that uh, he would be the top contender in the turf sprint. Yeah, I think uh, uh, Cogburn may turn out to be uh, 
the uh, shortest price for the two days of the Breeders' Cup uh, with with his record. Uh, he's won three in a row. He's won six out of the last seven. He won uh, a turf sprint at uh, Kentucky Downs. He won the really contentious uh, uh, grade one Jiper in New York and another race title, the uh, turf sprint, the real original in this division, Brian, uh, a grade two that was run at uh, Churchill Downs. Yeah, there's just, there's not a lot of grade ones uh, uh, in the turf sprint division, but uh, Cogburn uh, has been, for the most part, running the competition off their feet. Yeah, he's six for seven since he switched from turf. He was a pretty good dirt sprinter, but he's better on turf. And uh, this year, three for three, three dominant wins. He is uh, everything you want in a turf sprinter, and he will be tough to beat. Having said that, there's a lot of international intrigue as well in this turf sprint. Uh, uh, the horse we both have on our list at number three and number four, Brad Sell. He'll be running his final race of his career. He, it looks like he's got the best sprint form in all of Europe. Oh, yeah, Brian. And, and interesting, if you look at the – past performances. Some of those were in pretty fast times. I, I often am concerned about the Europeans uh, uh, in these in these turf sprints because sometimes they just don't run as fast as our turf sprinters do. But uh, some fast times for this one uh, was second in uh, Group 1 at Longchamp, won a Group 1 at the Kerr, and another one at York. Yeah, he's he's all class, four-year-old, very good. Hasn't come to America before, but his last race will be in America. We'll see how well Brad Sell does. Another one that we got to talk about from Europe is Big Ebbs, and Big Ebbs is the one I have number two on my list. I think this horse is born for five furlongs, even more than Cogburn or Brad Sell. Big Ebbs likes five furlongs, and that's what we get at Del Mar. Big Ebbs, of course, won the juvenile turf sprint last year coming over uh, a, a just a very fast horse who I think will make Cogburn, Cogburn uh, work. He's had a couple of nice wins in Europe. His form has been a little bit off and on, but I think there are some excuses there. I think Big Ebbs is one to worry about, as is the the, the Brad, uh, the Graham Motion, South African, six-year-old gelding. Uh, I'm probably not even going to try to pronounce his name. <laughs> it is a Vangu Vangu. Um, we knew he was coming from South Africa. We knew he was top class in turf sprints a long time ago. He's been here for, for months and months, but we finally got to see him at Colonial Downs, and he looked good running just a little bit longer winning that turf sprint at Colonial Downs. He sure did look good, Brian, for uh, trainer Graham Motion, uh, and that and that impressed me. And, yeah, we've had some tricky names to pronounce on this show some th thus far, and I was with you. Like, I, I don't even want to try uh, – I don't want to try with this, but yeah, I, I thought that that first American start victory uh, uh, it was was a race that made me take notice of this turf sprinter. Yeah, and I think you'll probably have some odds on him. Uh, maybe Graham Motion makes him bet a little bit more, but the South African is for real. Another horse we both have on our list, Matt, four of our top five are, are consensus, and that's uh, Motorious. Motorious uh, was the favorite in the Breeders' Cup turf sprint last year, and he had a bad trip. No no way to look around that. He still was only beaten about a length and a half. Uh, rounding back into form, he likes five furlongs. He likes Delmar. In fact, he's coming off a win at five furlongs at Delmar. Yep. Yep, absolutely. Uh, and again, uh, I'd like to put in these horses, these talented turf horses that are getting to run on their home uh, home course and, and Motorious for Phil D'Amato fit the bill for me. Yeah, absolutely. He's he's a danger in here and maybe he'll get more luck than last year. I also see you have another Californian on your list. I believe he's from uh, Richard Mandela. From Richard Mandela, that is correct. Uh, was a winner of... Uh, uh, a grade two at Santa Anita in uh, uh, in preparation for this. Yeah, Forbidden Kingdom's been a classy horse. I, I would like him a little bit longer than five furlongs, but uh, still, I, I think you're right. I think he's dangerous in here. Matt, let's take a quick break to uh, uh, let people know about Super Screener. My buddy Mike Shuddy does a really good job with Super Screener every year. 
Uh, they got 14 races now, and you can get this right away. You can get an early copy. There are bonuses, uh, bonus content involved when you get the early copy, Matt. And uh, we ourselves like to take a look at the Super Screener every year. Oh, that's for sure. And yeah, uh, even though it's early, they do send out updates uh, uh, heading towards the Breeders' Cup to, to keep things uh, up to date. Yeah, that's right. So you'll you'll get more information than you get right now. But right now you'll get a whole lot of information. Mike's been working on this for a while already. So we recommend the Super Screener as a great product to get to know uh, who to look for as far as betting, whether it be for the win or exotic spots in the Breeders' Cup Super Screener. All right, Matt, we got three more races still. Let's talk juvenile turf here. And uh, we're in agreements a little bit in that we both like New Century. Uh, New Century is a grandson of Kitten's Joy. A nice horse, uh, Kamiko, was the son of Kitten's Joy. Is the sire of New Century. He's been getting better since he's going longer. This is only a mile, but uh, since he moved on to a mile, New Century's been impressive over in Europe. And then he came over to Woodbine, and he just zoomed down the Woodbine stretch impressively. He's my top pick in here. Yep, won his last two races nicely, Brian, and that uh, win in the summer stakes. Uh, which is a uh, typically a good prep race for this uh, juvenile turf. Absolutely it is. I have them one, you have them two. Your number one, though, is a different horse that I have down my list just a little bit lower. Yeah, I've got uh, Zulu Kingdom for Chad Brown. Chad Brown uh, uh, has been very tough in these juvenile uh, turf races, the juvenile turf and the juvenile Phillies uh, turf uh, uh uh, in the last few years, Zulu Kingdom is three for three in his uh, in his career. A win last time in the Pilgrim in New York, and the with anticipation, a uh, uh, a grade three. Yeah, Zulu Kingdom. You know, I I think he's going to get bet, and I I want to try to bet against him. I just don't like his record. I oh no, he's three for three. No, that's not why. <laughs> That's not why he's high on my list. Zulu Kingdom has been has been winning. He, he both of his starts over here were by a neck. I just haven't been overly impressed with a horse who could go favored in here. He's dangerous. He could win. I have him on my list, but a little bit lower. My number two is actually uh, San, Satano Satano Carnival. Matt Satano trying to get that first name right. Satano Carnival impressive over in japan I, I like a lot of J japanese horses coming over for this breeders cup uh one is uh debuted by seven lengths last time he faced a uh, graded stakes company over there in japan and uh kicked away late to win uh by uh, a little over a length both were big fields uh nice turn of foot i think this japanese two-year-old has a big shot we both have this uh, same number three and that was the horse that was beaten by New Century last time in the summer. Yeah, so we guess we like that summer stakes uh, uh, a good bit as a prep for this Breeders' Cup race um, from Charlie Appleby and uh, was uh, before coming over to North America, had a really nice uh, victory at Ascot. Yeah, and he had beaten New Century over in Europe. Uh, certainly New Century was more impressive in Canada, but Al, Al Kudra had a little bit of a, a little bit of trouble there at Woodbine, so he could turn the tables. Uh, uh, one to watch, and again, go Dolphin Appleby. Uh, Matt, your number four was not respected at Keeneland when he pulled off a very nice win. He did uh, train by Will Walden, the son of uh, 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 trainer Elliot, former trainer Elliot Walden. Uh, won his last two races that Grade Two at uh, Bourbon in, in the Bourbon at. Keeneland and a maiden special weight at uh, at uh, at Indianapolis. Um, I think this is a nice uh, young horse. It's a little tougher with the American horses because ours ours uh, tend to have fewer races in their past performances than the Euros do. Yeah, he, he the one thing I'll say about Men in Red Station is he flew down that uh, last sixteenth uh, of a mile in the Keeneland stretch to win. Uh, to win that graded stakes. I have scored the champ as my uh, number four, Matt, uh, uh, first, third, and then first in three races. Uh, this is a Joseph O'Brien runner coming from Ireland. He won at the Curl last time, uh, group one. 
uh, getting better. Mile probably suits another another European to watch out for. Who's your number five? My number five is my uh, is my California entry into uh, the the juvenile turf uh, for California trainer Jeff Mullins. This one is three for three with a recent win in the Zuma Beach and a win at Del Mar in a in a Grade Three and also broke his maiden at Del Mar. Yeah, and I think they're all at a mile, uh, if I'm not uh, mistaken, a uh, uh, horse to watch out for for the locals in California. Let's switch to the Phillies now, Matt. we got to get through all these horses we're talking about. <laughs> Lake Victoria, Lake Victoria, Lake Victoria. We, uh, I don't know about you. I, I'm speaking for both of us, and I shouldn't do that. But Lake Victoria stands over this field and was easy to put at number one for me. Is that a little bit true for you too? I, I felt the same way, Brian, although it is the juvenile Phillies turf, if I'm correct, Brian, that the Americans have had the most success in. Is that right? As opposed to the boys. Yeah. Juvenile Phillies turf, uh, the males have, uh, Americans have done well. And, and Lake Victoria, of course, is coming over for Aiden O'Brien from Europe. But but we unfortunately there's a few of these and they seem to be Aiden O'Brien mostly. We don't know for sure Lake Victoria's coming. I, I've heard that it, she might come, she might not come. I think she's probably the best two-year-old Philly turf Philly in the world, or at least one of the top two two-year-old turf Phillies in the world. Uh, if she comes, we like her. Not sure that she is coming. We'll have to wait and see for sure. Our number two is the same as well, and, and this time we're both talking Californians. Yeah, this one's for, uh, again, we mentioned Phil D'Amato uh, earlier in the show. D'Amato is a very good, one of the best turf trainers out in California and, and thought process. She's won her won her last three races in a row. She won uh, the uh, Surfer Girl that is, uh, I think, run on the same day as the Zuma Beach, um, uh, if I'm correct. She won that race by... Uh, by four lengths, Brian, and won another stake uh, at uh, at uh, Del Mar. Also, one of the la last three races, I think, were all at Del Mar. Yeah, she's she's been dominant, uh, and and that's one of the reasons we both have her that high. She's really looked good in winning these races easily, and uh, a lot will determine uh, whether she's the favorite or not, as far as who will Brian has because besides Lake Victoria, he's got other threats in here, but I think Lake Victoria would be the one horse that is preferred over thought process. As we move down the list, I see a winner from Canada again, prominently on both of our lists. You have, and one more time, three, I have her down at five. Yep. Two wins in a row for this one for trainer Mark Cassie. It took Mark Cassie a little bit longer than he probably wanted it to take for him to win a Breeders' Cup. But once he did, he's won a whole bunch of them. And now here he's got and one more time, won that Natalma grade one the last time out and was a maiden, uh, maiden breaker uh, at Saratoga, interestingly, on an off-the-turf muddy track. Yeah, she looked good on the dirt at Saratoga. And then she looked good finishing. Uh, I bet the uh, stable mate that she beat that day in the in the Tama and one more time was better uh, late. Vixen is the stable mate who might also be in the race. Uh, I was impressed with N one more time. She's got a shot here. Uh, my number four is a European for a Aiden O'Brien, and I think she might be even more likely to come over. Heaven's Gate, a daughter of Churchill. She's already had seven races over there. She's experienced. She's been consistent. She's coming off a, a Group two win at the Curra last time, Matt. And let's talk a little bit about the female version of that uh, two-year-old turf race at Keeneland. That's the Jessamine. And um, we went with different horses. My third was third in the Jessamine. Your five on your list was number one in the Jessamine, or the winner of the Jessamine, I should say. Yeah, uh, um, I have uh, May Day ready in the fifth spot. She is three for three in her career. You mentioned that Jessamine, uh, 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 a group two. She was the winner of that. She also won the juvenile filly at uh, 
at Kentucky Downs and broke her maiden at Saratoga. For a trainer uh, that uh, you and I know, Brian uh, Joe Lee, we remember him as a longtime assistant for Kieran McLaughlin, who's gone out on his own. And for me, you know, I think it's great that uh, Joe has uh, uh, got himself a really nice filly here. Yeah, she is a really nice filly, and I, I'm not sure how she didn't make my top five. I, I was scrambling after the after the top two, but I, I was most impressed with Jessamine of, of the horse who was two noses short of her, and her name is Destino Diora, uh, a daughter of Bolt Doro, um, trained by Brad Cox. Nice winner of her debut. This was only her second race, the Jessamine, and she had trouble. By the way, May Day Ready had some trouble too, but I think Destino Diora had even more trouble beating two noses. I look for her to move forward uh, in the Juveniles Phillies turf. Matt, you're number four. You have Kilwin there. I do have Kilwin for uh, veteran trainer Rusty Arnold. Uh, Kilwin is two for two with a nice stakes victory at Kentucky Dam. Yeah, nice win at Kentucky Downs for sure. All right, Matt, one more race. Let's get to it. It's the Juvenile Turf Sprint. This will also be five furlongs. Both of those two-year-old turf races are one mile. The Juvenile Turf Sprint, like the Turf Sprint, five furlongs. Governor Sam is prominent on both of our lists. Yeah, Governor Sam sure is uh, the winner of four races in a row, won the Indian Summer at Keeneland most recently, also won a stakes race at Colonial Downs, and yet another one at Monmouth Park. So uh, 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 Governor Sam has traveled around a good bit and done well everywhere. Yeah, big respect for him. Uh, Big respect for him. Four in a row, the son of improbable. Saratoga, Monmouth, Colonial Downs, Keeneland. That's impressive. This is going to be his toughest test yet. One of the reasons is Big Mojo and Big Mojo, uh, Mick Appleby. Listen, I think he points for this race now. The trainer Mick Appleby won this race last year with Big Evs. This year he's got Big Mojo. I've liked what I've seen. I think he's a true five furlong horse. And I think uh, Mick Appleby has a real shot to win this again with Big Mojo. He wants firm turf. He'll get it at Del Mar. I have him won. You have him down at five. Uh, who is your number th- uh, two horse, Matt? My number two horse is Isterius. Isterius uh, uh, coming over from uh, coming over from Europe is a winner of a Grade Two, the the Doncaster, and won a Group Three at Longchamp. Yeah, and there is uh, a, a little misprint on this one. I didn't catch it, Matt. But uh, my number three is the same as your number two, Isterius. Uh, he went uh, back and forth in a couple five furlong races with Big Mojo. I like Big Mojo going a little bit better on the firm turf, but Asterius is is definitely a big threat here. I actually have him number three. Destino Dioro, of course, was my juvenile turf filly. Uh, your number three is a dangerous, interesting horse. Yep, another one uh, 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 that is trained by Jose D'Angelo um, that was a winner of his first race and that first race was in a stakes race at Gulfstream Park and uh, D'Angelo then took him over to England to Ascot where he ran a really nice second. Yeah he's only had two races but it's hard to argue Uh, if the travel doesn't get him going back and forth uh, and he hasn't run for a while he is a dangerous horse as is I think the Japanese horse in here Matt the son of twirling candy Two nice wins. I watched these replays of a Koro Sieg, and I think he is a, uh, a big threat in here. Again, another Japanese horse. They're coming over loaded. We both have him on our list. Yeah, I've got him on my list for sure. Uh, you know, I, I, I am always a little bit hesitant with the horses that have raced only in Japan. I, I like to see them go out and and face some other competition, whether it's in our country or frequently it's over in Dubai or Maidan. I feel like then I've got a little bit of a better feel for where they fit in. Yeah, not me. I think I think the class of Japan is uh, for real, and we're going to see some 
good Tiro performances as well as older horses from Japan. The only horse we didn't mention yet is on my list, Chasing Liberty. Rob Atris chains this uh, uh, two-year-old turf sprinter, and he has a big closing kick. There's a lot of speed. Most importantly, maybe, is he's also found a lot of trouble in his last couple. Um, he was beaten by Governor Sam about two lengths last time, but had a horrid trip. If he gets the trip and gets the kind of speed I think we might see in this race, Maybe chasing Liberty is a big threat in here as well. Matt, can I get a parting shot from you on this turf edition of the Breeders' Cup Top Contenders? We, we made it through. Uh, uh, that's a lot of races, but there's a lot of races in the Breeders' Cup. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, uh, pre-entries, I think, are due Monday, and they get announced on Wednesday. So I assume, Brian, we'll be back on Thursday next week. Yeah, we'll be talking the pre-entries. They're due to come out. Matt's right. Monday is when they're finalized, but they are announced uh, 12 o'clock Eastern on Wednesday. So we'll uh, we'll have a lot to talk about with those pre-entries. But we, for the meantime, we hope you enjoyed these two top contender shows, talking about all the horses Matt and I see as the most likely winners at this point from uh, all the information we have about who's going to be running in the Breeders' Cup, a little harder with these turf horses, especially trainer Aiden O'Brien's horses, but that's, uh, I digress. Anyway, we'll see you back here next week on Horse Center for a lot more Breeders' Cup. Until then, good luck. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next